I grew up in a time and a place where dreams were just dreams with little chance of um, coming true. Dean Reed, thank you so much for joining us today on This Is Purdue. We're so excited to get into your Boilermaker journey. You know, this June you're stepping down after 25 years at the university, um, but we're excited to hear more about your accomplishments and everything that you've done as Dean for the past 17 years. So we'll start at the beginning. I want to know, have you always wanted to be, you know, a veterinarian? Where did your passion and, and love for this come from? Well, I'm happy to be part of part of this today. And uh, the process started for me uh, in my little town in southern Alabama. I grew up uh, around all kinds of animals and I had uh, love animals. Um, I love science and I love mathematics. But as a very young child, veterinary medicine wasn't really on my radar screen until probably high school. Although my father would uh, mention veterinary medicine many times to me and suggested that um, veterinary medicine would be something that I would I should pursue because I think he had a fondness for veterinary medicine, but the time and era uh, where he grew up uh, just didn't, uh, didn't lend itself to pursuing that, that dream. So I started thinking more and more about veterinary medicine and um, then I had a vocational agriculture teacher who really encouraged me to look into veterinary medicine and I thought, yes, that's something that I want to do. It would allow me to combine my love for animals, mm -hmm. my love for science, and my interest in medicine. And it was about the 10th or 11th grade. Wow. So you've been wanting to pursue this and have been interested in this for a while. Yes, that it, became a, it became a dream. Amazing. Yeah. So what drew you to Purdue to pursue your PhD in diagnostic pathology and walk our listeners and our viewers through why pathology is important in veterinary yeah. medicine? Yeah. Well, uh, as I said, the dream uh, was to become a, a veterinarian. And I thought that I would finish veterinary school, return to my little hometown, mm -hmm. and I would be the second veterinarian in the county that, where I grew up. So that was the plan. That was the dream. And it was the second year in veterinary school uh, where I uh, took the course called Pathology, Pathology of, of, of Domestic Animals. And during that year, I, I developed a fondness for pathology. And pathology is the, uh, the study of the causes of diseases and how the body responds to uh, injury. And so I thought, wow, this is, a, this is an interesting field. And so I thought I needed to find out more, um, more information about, about pathology. And uh, that summer, after the second year of veterinary school, I actually had an opportunity to work in a, a medical school, wow. University of Alabama, Birmingham, top-notch medical school. And I worked in the uh, Department of Comparative uh, Pathology, and we studied the pathology of laboratory animals. And after that summer, I thought, well, this... Um, this is interesting. I think I may want to pursue this. So I completed my third year of veterinary school and um, decided I needed another opportunity. And I had a chance to um, do an internship uh, for a large um, uh, pharmaceutical company in Michigan. And so I spent this summer there um, learning the role that pathologists, pathologists play in drug uh, discovery and drug development. And then after that summer, I was sold on, on pathology. And not many people can say they studied at a college and then later yeah. became the dean. Yeah. So take us back to 2006 when you were offered the dean of Purdue's College of Veterinary Medicine. What were you feeling? Had you, had you always wanted to, to be a dean at a school? Becoming dean of a college of veterinary medicine was not in my game plan. Okay. Uh, it sort of just happened. Uh, so back to that internship uh, in, in Michigan, uh, as a, well, a junior a veterinary student, I met a Purdue graduate. And he learned about my strong interest in pathology and he had obtained his PhD from patholo in pathology from Purdue and convinced me that this was the, uh, uh, the best place in the world to study pathology and that summer I interacted with Michigan State graduates and a couple of Purdue graduates and the 
Purdue graduates won out, they convinced me to take a look at uh, Purdue and I came down and here and uh, uh, interacted with the faculty and the people and had a fabulous visit and uh, went back to veterinary school and uh, finished my fourth year and decided, yeah, I want to I want to study pathology and I want to go to Purdue. And at that time, Purdue had a wonderful uh, program uh, in infectious diseases, primarily of swine. You know, Indiana is a huge swine producing state. And so there were a number of swine diseases that uh, needed study and from a pathology standpoint, from a a, a pre microbiology standpoint and from a preventative standpoint. And so I had a chance to work with uh, a well-known, highly regarded veterinary pathologist, and we studied uh, enteric diseases of swine. And uh, I thought that was an area where I could make a, an impact. And, uh, it, and it was, I, I, I was able to contribute quite a bit to uh, the understanding of a number of swine diseases, along with my fellow uh, graduate students here. So Purdue was a, a powerhouse uh, back then in that area of swine enteric disease research. So I applied to Purdue and a few other places and decided that I would come here. And I came here because, because of the people. They were, they were just wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, the Purdue graduate uh, had a wonderful experience here and convinced me to come. And, so I came uh, two weeks after graduating from veterinary school. I was starting a PhD in pathology, uh, looking forward to another four years of uh, training. So after my undergraduate training and then four years of vet school, I was ready for four more four more years. <laughs> lots of schooling. <laughs> lot, lots of lots of schooling. And when I arrived in the summer of 1978, um, I had no idea what was ahead of me. Little did I think many years later that I would be Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Purdue University. Um, well, why did I think that? Well, where I grew up, uh, there were no role models like that. Uh, I never thought that I would uh, be able to achieve such a, a wonderful achievement. And so uh, it was surreal. When I, when I came back to Purdue in 2006 after being here for 12 years before I left and came back to think that I would uh, come back as Dean of the College of Veterinary Medicine. So it was a, a great professional honor because at that time there were only about 30 colleges of veterinary medicine. So think about that. In the whole country, United States of America, only 30 jobs. Wow. And I was, I had one of those. And to lead one of uh, America's great veterinary colleges is a privilege uh, beyond description. And would you say, what would you say about the current, you know, research being done at Purdue? Well, the current research is, uh, you know, back then there, there was a, a greater emphasis on um, research in large animals or livestock. But now the research is, there's a lot more research on with companion animals. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, uh, cancer research uh, and, uh, and other kinds of research that we do using animal models of human disease. So uh, a lot of our research now is, fo is focused on uh, not just understanding animal disease, but human disease uh, as well. You know, for example, there's certain kinds of cancer uh, where animals serve as great models. So any treatments or developments we have in animals may apply uh, very closely to uh, treatments in, in humans as well. And so that could be uh, quite uh, important in saving uh, lots of time, money, and with doing clinical trials. So if, if a drug doesn't work in, in an animal that has a disease similar to humans, it may not work in humans. And so we, we skip uh, a clinical trial and, and uh, move on to something else. So that's something that we, we, we work on now. And then I think collaborative research with other colleges is probably greater today than it was back then. You know, we work with colleagues in the biomedical engineering, for example, colleagues in agriculture, colleagues in pharmacy. So it's, it's, a, it's more of a, a team collaborative effort 
a lot more interdisciplinary research today than I remember back in the, uh, you know, the 80s when I was on, on the faculty here. And you've said that as a black uh, vet student, you kind of just touched on that now. You had to overcome a lot of adversity, but your grandmother, your mother, yeah. it sounds like your father, yes. were always loving, supporting, you know, yeah. encouraging you. How has that made a difference on, on your path? And then, you know, moving forward as yeah. dean, how have you yeah. been able to pass that along to yeah, students? That, that, has, that had a big impact on how I have approached every job that I've had. I grew up in a time and a place where Dreams were just dreams with little chance of um, coming true. I mean, I grew up uh, during the time of, well, when schools were segregated and uh, they were trying to desegregate them. Uh, I was denied access to uh, the sco uh, schools. Uh, my father was um, very uh, instrumental in encouraging me to don't give up. My grandmother, who uh, actually taught me first grade on the front porch of our home wow. because first grade for me lasted one week. There was an attempt to desegregate my school. Uh, I was a little happy uh, a six-year-old not knowing what was going on and all I knew is school was fun that week and I was, I was happy getting up going to interact with my classmates and school just stopped. And so during that year when my parents, my, my mother, my father were uh, filing lawsuits trying to get me back into school, my grandmother taught me the, taught me first grade. I guess I was being homeschooled and didn't even know it. I'm not even sure we used that terminology back in those days. But I felt that uh, I was one of the lucky ones. I uh, had an opportunity to go to school with some very talented people who had dreams too. but. Uh, for many reasons, um, they didn't they they didn't make it the way that I did, and the difference for me was I think was I had uh, tremendous support from my parents and from many people in my community. I felt like everybody was uh, pulling for me. Everybody wanted to see me uh, succeed um, because from my in my community where I grew up, uh, no one had ever pursued veterinary medicine. To my knowledge, no one had ever pursued human medicine, certainly no professional uh, training that I was aware of. So I was uh, lucky to have such support to be able to achieve what I was able to achieve, but it was with a lot of support. And how has that impacted you as a dean to be able to support your students yeah, now? Yeah. Well, since I had so much support, I, I knew that there was no way that I could ever pay back my parents or pay back others who supported me. The only thing I could do would do was to, to pass it on, to help others achieve uh, their dreams because I found that uh, nothing is more rewarding, at least for me, to, to see someone else uh, pursue their dreams. And so, you know, I've encountered many young people who want to pursue things and you know, they've never, they've never uh, had role models. Um, they, didn't, they don't have the support that they need to be successful. So I thought, well, maybe I can make a, a small difference. And that's what I've tried to do. And so my background and uh, my experiences uh, really have guided me uh, in everything that I have done as dean and, and in life in general. I think you've made a big difference, not just a small difference. Yeah. <laughs> So one of your first acts as dean was to establish the Office of Engagement and then the Office for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Tell us a little bit about why that was important to you um, and the benefits that you've seen for yeah. these this college to have personally um, benefited from the creation yeah. of these offices. Well, I thought that it was very important that our college really connect well with uh, stakeholders, the many stakeholders here in Indiana. Uh, you know, Purdue is a land grant institution. I, I, I believe deeply in that uh, mission, that land grant mission. Uh, and so the Office of Engagement allowed us to uh, reach out to uh, elementary kids, high school kids, uh, to encourage them to study science, to, to learn science, and, uh, and maybe to even consider veterinary medicine sometimes. 
And so we, uh, we've done that. We've written children's books. We've gotten uh, extramural funding. We've provided all kinds of opportunities uh, for young people to, to learn science and to see how it, it can be fun learning it. And then we, we wanted to engage uh, populations that traditionally have been underserved uh, because veterinary medicine needs to be more diverse. It has the dubious distinction of being the least diverse of all the veterinary professions, and I wanted to uh, to change that. Uh, so we all, we started the um, uh, Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and that office has worked uh, really hard to make our college welcome for everybody, to include everybody, to include a diversity, certainly diversity in all the dimensions that we typically think of, but diversity in thought, diversity in opinion, diversity in interest, all of that, and to, to, and to provide an environment where everybody can reach their full, full potential. So it was important to establish the Office of Engagement, the Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and also I greatly expanded our International Programs Office because I felt that our students needed to be culturally competent. So we set the lofty goal of providing 100% of our students with the international experience if they want it. It's not required because I felt strongly that our students needed to see veterinary medicine practice around the world, but probably more importantly, they needed to interact with uh, cultures from around the world because our country is a very diverse country and just about every aspect of veterinary medicine that they would pursue uh, they would interact with people from all over the world and all kinds of all different belief systems. And so I wanted them to be culturally competent because they were they we were we're trying to prepare them for 30, maybe 40, 50 year careers. And and all of these things were to give them um, the tools to be successful. And your strategic planning initiatives led to the opening of the David and Bonnie Brunner Purdue Veterinarian Medical hospital complex recently in 2022. Tell us about this expansion, the new facilities, you know, how does that grow the hospital services, clinical trials research? How has that made a huge impact uh, right here at Purdue? Yeah, yeah well, I, you know, the College of Veterinary Medicine at Purdue uh, admitted the first class in 1959. So if you look at most of the veterinary schools in the country, Purdue is sort of middle aged. You know, some of the older ones are over 100 years old. And so I, as I studied the, um, the college before I came and, and shortly after I came, I thought we needed to address uh, facilities. Um, we had grown uh, new, new programs uh, and we didn't have space to fully accommodate those new programs. Uh, new services needed to be offered through our hospital if, if we were going to meet the needs of the clientele and also provide the learning experiences for our students that we needed to to provide. So it was time for an expansion of facilities. And so the expansion of facilities allowed us to increase our enrollment because as the population, U.S. population is growing, the pet population is growing, the livestock populations are growing. So we need to produce more veterinarians to address the need, all those needs. And, uh, and we couldn't do that without uh, uh, expanding the facilities. And so it's a wonderful new facility that allows us to offer the state-of-the-art state uh, medical care for the animal populations here in Indiana. What do you think that means, you know, not only to Purdue, but also to the greater community? Well, this is a wonderful resource for our community, certainly in the greater, greater Lafayette area, to have a, a tertiary uh, animal hospital where we have all kinds of specialists to address almost any uh, health care need uh, that an animal would, would have. And it's a real, real special uh, facility. And if, in fact, it's special for the whole state of Indiana. Uh, there are only 33 vet schools in the U.S currently accredited colleges and, and, and still many states uh, do not have college, a College of Veterinary Medicine. So it's a wonderful resource for, for, in, for Indiana residents. And we're also ranked 11th in yes. the country, one of the few schools in the nation to educate all members of the veterinary healthcare team. So can you walk us through what that means? 
Yes, educating the uh, the health the veterinary health care team is a, a major focus of our college, and the health care team consists of the doctor of veterinary medicine, the veterinary nurse, and veterinary specialist. So we can cover all aspects of, of care, and our veterinary students train alongside veterinary nursing students. So they learn how to work as, as a team. Uh, they, learn, um, how t they, they learn how to tackle very complex medical problems. Our DVM, Doctor of Veterinary Medicine graduates, uh, should know how to fully utilize veterinary nurses. And veterinary nurses should know how to work with doctors of veterinary medicine. So it's very unique uh, here at Purdue to have that. And there are only three other veterinary schools that would also have an embedded veterinary nursing program that could claim that they are also uh, training the veterinary team. Absolutely. That makes sense that they all should know how to work together. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So what, what is like the work and the research being done at Purdue? How is that different from other institutions? Like how does yeah. our work here impact yeah. the world? Well, our, our veterinary college is, is fairly unique in that um, in addition to some of the traditional research areas that probably all vet schools work on, and like for example, uh, maybe cancer research, infectious disease for, for research where you're developing vaccines and learning how diseases, uh, infectious agents uh, impact the, the body in, in various ways. We have, um, we have a focus on the human-animal bond. So we actually study the interaction of people with animals. We look at uh, the positive attributes that own, owning an animal brings to us, humans. We know that uh, owning an animal impacts positively our physical and, and mental health. So we study that. We also have an embedded uh, animal uh, welfare science center so we address issues of uh, animal welfare, and that's not uh, typical at many U.S. veterinary schools. So uh, those are some of the things that are very special here at, at Purdue. And during your time as dean, you've increased the DVM size, class size by 20%. That, that's a lot. What can you attribute that growth to? Well, um, I guess a couple of things. And at the time um, when we, incre we increased it, we were sort of reading a crystal ball. You know, we had to look in our crystal ball and determine, okay, um, what 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 the workforce look like in, in four years or five years or six years, because the day you decide to increase enrollment in a college of veterinary medicine, you don't see the results for four or five years. Yeah, sure. So you, you hope that there's a need. And uh, and there is a need now. In fact, we need to increase increase enrollment again. And, and why? Uh, that's because uh, the animal populations are increasing. Uh, more people are seeking veterinary services than ever before. Um, and there's tremendous interest in the profession. Uh, the number of applicants to our program has increased over 100% in the last uh, uh, four or five years. Wow. Yes. So. Uh, there's lots of interest. Lots of young people want to pursue veterinary medicine. And fortunately, there's a huge need for more veterinarians, uh, particularly in some of the rural areas of our state and, and in fact, throughout the, the country. Uh, finding veterinar a veterinarian to treat uh, animals in rural America is increasingly a challenge. And, you know, a lot of people in the Purdue community have brought their pet here, or their animal here, myself included. How does it feel knowing that that this college has made, you know, a positive impact on students, the Purdue community, but also, like you said, the, the whole state yeah. of Indiana? Well, knowing that we have a positive impact brings a lot of personal satisfaction to me. I can't tell you how many times that I'm um, maybe in the grocery store, or, uh, I'm waiting to have my car service and somebody Will, will come up and say, hey, I, I, I used your emergency service yesterday or last week. And I always ask, well, how did it turn out? <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, nearly all the time, they say it turned out very well. And they're so thankful that they had that uh, service here and they could utilize it. And uh, 
So it brings me a lot of, lot of personal joy and satisfaction to know that um, our services are valued and that people really appreciate having them here. What do you attribute, you know, you said you grew up in a rural area with animals, but what do you attribute like your love for animals to, or what, what, is, what does it mean to you to? Well, I, you know, the, everybody is a little different. They probably describe it in a different way, but, but most people probably will say, you know, it's probably that unconditional love that uh, our pets give us. I, my, um, my, 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 my last pet was uh, a chocolate Labrador. Oh. Her name was Samantha, Sammy. Oh. <laughs> and Sammy brought so much joy to me, just looking in her brown eyes, just, you know, I could just feel my body relaxing. <laughs> and every day when I would, I'm, I, I would get home and she would be staring out the window and the car would drive up and then she would run around to uh, the garage door and and uh, wait for me to open the door. And there she is, and uh, happy to see me. Sammy, for Sammy, every day was a good day. Yep. And uh, she would uh, get her ball and come nudge me on the knee and say, it's time to go fetch. Pay attention to me. Just pay attention to me. <laughs> so, you know, those, uh, those are the kind of memories that our pets uh, have us to develop, and they bring so much joy into our, our lives. And, and, and it, you know, whether it's a dog or a cat or some other animal, uh, they, they bring so much uh, joy. And research now shows that they have such a positive impact on, on our health. Uh, they, you know, having a pet lowers your blood pressure, your anxiety level goes down, your whole well-being is, is, is increased. To, you know, so um, they're, they're just wonderful uh, to have around. Absolutely. After serving as dean for nearly two decades, do you have a certain accomplishment that that sticks out, one or two that you could share with us that you're really proud of? Well, I'm very proud of the um, infrastructure that we have put in place to serve our students, um, to to make them practice ready veterinarians, uh, and that's not just the the physical or technical skills, but it's, it's what sometimes people call the, the soft skills, the communication skills, the intercultural skills, the appreciation of, of diversity and differences in people. So I'm very proud of that. And also very proud of, uh, you know, the facilities that we've been able to, uh, uh, the new facilities we've been able to uh, obtain here at Purdue. Because in addition to this beautiful hospital here we have another hospital located in Shelbyville, Indiana, and that's an equine hospital. And it, it services the equine uh, industry in that area, uh, pleasure horses, race horses. And so having these facilities to really impact, uh, impact animal health here in, in our state uh, brings me a lot of pride. And uh, also the, these are great uh, facilities for training the next generation of veterinarians. Absolutely. Yeah, so those are some of the things that I'm, I'm most proud of. Have you had, do you have any stories of, you know, vet students coming back to you and saying, oh, Dean Reed, now I work here and I always think of what you said back in the day to me or any specific student stories you would want to share? Well, yeah, I, I get them all the time. And um, and I had one story, I guess one, to one instance uh, that came up a few years ago. I was walking, I was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, walking at a conference and walking from the conference center to the hotel. And a former student came up to me and she stopped me on the sidewalk and said, I just want you to know that what you told me that day impacted my life. Oh my gosh. And thank you. And she walked away. Do you know what you told and her? And I don't even remember what I told her. <laughs> Well, it made but that, an impact on But that on was her. so impactful to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, to this day, I have wondered what, in, you know, I, I say a lot of things <laughs> during the daytime course of a day or course of a week or a year. But what I said that day, I don't know, but uh, that meant a lot to that person. And so that meant a lot to me that I had such a positive impact on someone's, on someone's life. Yeah, that's and incredible. and then you know then being a, a dean, um, 
is is a lot of fun because I tell our students all the time that, okay, when you come here, this is a place where dreams can come true. I had I had a dream, and I tell them I said you got to believe in the beauty of your dream, and don't let anybody deter you from that. You gotta be persistent. Be persistent. And so when we admit a veterinary class, I call every applicant that that we want to make an offer to. Wow. I personally call them. And it takes two or three days to get, get them all. But those are two or three of the most, of the happiest days of my year because every call represents a dream that's about to come true. And I tell the student that uh, you've worked many years Think about all the courses you've taken, the exams you've taken. You, you've tried to get experience and animal experience, veterinary experience. And now I'm offering you admission to the College of Veterinary Medicine at Purdue. The ball is in your court. The ball is in your court. And I have gotten everything from tears to screams to, and I think one of the, one of the, one of the calls that I don't think I'll ever forget I called a student, and these days, it's easy to find students because they all have cell phones, so you never know where they're going to be. <laughs> so I called the student, and she was visiting, uh, she was out of the country. So the time difference, you know, I don't know, eight, ten hours difference. So I called her at three o'clock in the morning, her time. And uh, apparently she was up, the family was up, <laughs> and I offered her admission. And she was so excited, she was so excited. and. Um, and this was a, actually a landline, and she did not hang the phone up properly. So I heard the screaming, the yelling, oh. and the, the everybody doing the happy dance. Oh. It was, but to hear that and to, and to uh, feel the uh, excitement that, that that family had for their child, that, that meant a lot to me. So... There's just some of the happy times of being of being a dean. Yes, that's incredible. I love those <laughs> stories. How do you hope your future work beyond your role of dean will impact Purdue when you look ahead to the future? Yeah. Well, my biggest uh, hope is that the things that I've started will continue, will continue, that, uh, that others will see that there's been an impact, a positive impact here and we don't want to change it. We want to continue to to keep it going and to make it even 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 better. Uh, because uh, there are a lot of young people out there with with dreams, and we don't want those dreams to go unattained. And they need, sometimes need help. You know, they may not have uh, the strong parents' uh, support that I had or others. They may not have had opportunity to um, to, to visit a, a Purdue or a College of Veterinary Medicine, may not have seen a role model, but we have to make sure that we do everything we can to bring these opportunities to to their attention because it's, it's, there's a lot of talented young people out there. They just need a helping hand. Absolutely. Why are you proud to be a Boilermaker? What, what makes Purdue unique in your eyes? What makes Purdue unique? Uh, well, it all started back in, um, you know, back in uh, 1978 when I came here to graduate school. Um, so what what caused me to pick Purdue and not pick the other institutions that I was offered? And it was it was the people. It was the people. And and so people ask me all the time, well, why did you come back to Purdue? Well, it was the people. It was the people. And I think there's something about the, the Purdue spirit that is unique here. And, um, you know, and I think, you know, we don't probably, we, we probably could do a better job of telling our stories, of telling our stories, uh, because we have a lot of great stories to, to tell. And, uh, and Purdue is a special place for me, and I've spent, well, now most of my life here at, at, at Purdue. And if I had to do it all over again, I would do it all over again.
I just remember that first uh, year here as a graduate student. And the, the, the faculty embraced me and, and my wife, we, I was married at the time, about one year <laughs> I've been married. And uh, they just reached out to us. Uh, it was unbelievable, the kindness and support they gave us. And back in those days, you know, I was the only African-American uh, graduate student in the whole College of Veterinary Medicine at that time. Um, and it, but it always felt like home. I always felt like I was accepted and welcomed and, uh, and had, you know, four great years of graduate school and, and then was asked to stay on the faculty for eight years. And then I left. Yeah, I left because of a wonderful opportunity I had at another institution. And it wasn't because of the people or any, uh, anything negative here. It was because of great opportunity. And that great opportunity prepared me for another great opportunity. <laughs> and that was coming back here. Uh, Purdue. So when the provost uh, called me in, in the fall of 2006, she said, it is time for you to come home. Oh. And I said, I agree. I'll be there in January. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, we came back and uh, we've had a fabulous 17 years, my wife and I, and it's hard to believe that those years are gone by so quickly. And but what I have enjoyed, uh, again, it's the people. So I have stayed here. And why did I stay 17 years? Well, it's because of the people that I've been thoroughly enjoyed, um, the people I've worked with. And we have done everything that I've done. It's been a team effort. You know, I didn't do it all by myself. We, I had a great team to, to work with me. Uh, they believed in what we were trying to accomplish. We had. Uh, three uh, strategic plans, and everybody bought into those plans, and uh, we accomplished a lot together. What would you say your next giant leap is, personally or professionally? Well, my next leap, <laughs> a giant leap, I hope, <laughs> um, I'm not, I don't plan on just stopping and retiring. I have uh, a desire to work with uh, uh, many of our stakeholders, particularly from underrepresented communities. I want to work with uh, some of the minority serving institutions, uh, help them, uh, well, help students at those institutions see the, the path to becoming a, a veterinarian if they choose to, um, and maybe continue some of the work with some of the nonprofits that I've done, that I've worked with over the, over the years. So those are per perhaps not lofty, lofty goals, but those are goals that I want to, to have and hopefully can fulfill in, in my little way of uh, paying back. Well, we can't thank you enough for joining us. Is there anything I missed? Anything else you want to tell the Boilermaker community? Well, to I guess anything that I would say uh, would probably, they would already know. And that's, uh, you know, we, we love uh, Purdue. Um, Purdue has been responsible for uh, many of the good things in, in my life, and, and I'm sure that's true for many, many Boilermakers. And, you know, we have something here that's, that's special, and we all have to work hard to keep it that way. Absolutely. Well, it has been an honor and a joy to speak with you today. Well, thank you, Kate. This has been fun. You've uh, caused me to reminisce quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we like to do on this podcast. <laughs> thank you, Dean Reed. You're very welcome. Yeah.